So I think that's what it Now, I don't pretend that's going to mean exactly what we're going to see on next Tuesday, although I'm very hopeful. But what I'm really optimistic about is the fact that these, I hope, sure hope so, but I really am optimistic about, gives me a great, great hope for the future, is that these high school students who are concerned about their future chose the candidates that they know are concerned about their future. So I think this has a lot for the Republican ticket up and down the ballot. So uh, that gives, again, me great hope for the future. Before I leave, one last thing. Where's my wife? She was here somewhere. There she is. So I don't want to get in, in trouble with, with uh, Barbara Grassley. So Julie's over here. I got to make sure I mention her. Uh, we keep getting in trouble not doing that. So uh, Julie over here is, is a wonderful wife, a great mother, but she is a phenomenal volunteer on the campaign. She does anything that's needed. It's, you want to clap? You can clap. So much so that I, a couple weeks ago when I was talking to her praises up at an event in, uh, in Scott County, when the speaker came up after me, the keynote speaker, he said, vote for Julie's husband. <laughs> I do not need. So thank you. Please vote for Julie's husband. And now, vote for Mary Mosman also. Mary has been... <laughs> They have become a great friend. We are at events all the time in the 2nd District. I know she's doing events statewide, but I see her repeatedly over here. Warm, caring person, great auditor, and most importantly, or maybe not most importantly, most importantly for this job, the only CPA on the ballot. Hello, everybody. I'm just so thrilled to see this room packed. Thank you to The Vine for hosting us here, and thank you, everybody, for coming here. We are the politicians. We get to have the microphone, but the most important people in the room are you, because you are the ones that make it happen. No official gets elected without your work, so thank you for being here. I am Mary Mosman, and I am honored to serve you and everybody else in Iowa as the state auditor. And we are, we've been talking about some wonderful things, fantastic things at the state level and at the federal level, but most important, let's talk about auditing. What do you think? Yay! Yay. What we do in the State Auditor's Office, I recognize that it doesn't always get talked about. However, it does have a positive and a direct impact on every person in this state because you all are taxpayers. And what we do in our office, we audit every day and all day. We help make sure that the government officials at the state and local level are using your tax dollars for the public purpose intended. Audits are not optional. Audits are mandated, and they, most every government entity in Iowa is required to have an annual audit. These audits, they must be done by a licensed CPA who works within a CPA firm. I am the only CPA who's running for state auditor. My opponent, he says it's pointless and it doesn't matter if the state auditor is a CPA, but nothing could be further from the truth if you want the state auditor's office to audit. So that's what I, that's been my main message is, we have been, a, the State Auditor's Office has been a CPA firm for nearly 40 consecutive years because Iowans have elected a CPA to lead the office dating back to 1979. So our governor and our statewide team, we want to keep Iowa moving forward. I personally want to keep the State Auditor's Office working on behalf of the people of Iowa. Thank you. So that's the audit side of our division. Very briefly, I do want to also say we have a second division in our office. It's the investigative division because, unfortunately, there are occasions when government officials are misusing tax dollars. When that happens, we do send in our investigators. And we have issued over 100 investigative reports since I've been your auditor. And those investigations have tallied a little over $14 million of fraud in Iowa government entities. So, First thing I wanted to say is we are working on a fraud reduction program. That's a work in process. We want to make sure we're not only reporting on fraud and combating fraud, but we're doing something to help reduce the fraud from happening in the first place. So stay tuned for that because that is a we're very optimistic about that. But one of the things that my opponent uses a lot of money in some relatively false advertising, he says he wants to wake up the watchdog. The tax the state auditor's office has long been referred to as the taxpayer's watchdog. And he says he wants to wake that watchdog up. But my opponent is a former prosecutor in the Attorney General's office. And 
Of these 100 frauds that we've issued from the state auditor's office, he prosecuted five of them. He failed to prosecute the largest case of fraud in Iowa's history as identified by the state auditor's office. $1.9 million diverted from the University of Iowa Hospital into the personal bank account of a doctor. And when that particular report landed on his desk, no charges filed, nothing happened. So when he says, wake up the watchdog, I say all evidence to the contrary. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping the auditor's office working on behalf of the people of Iowa. I can only do so with your vote, so I humbly ask for your votes. I humbly ask, like everybody other candidate here is, using your sphere of influence, talking to the people that you know who may not know about the team up here, who may not know that it's how important it is to elect the people who want to work on behalf of Iowa and keep it moving forward. So thank you for being here today. It's a pleasure to be with you. And I am now going to say And now I have the privilege of introducing a very special lady who means a lot to a lot of people in this area. I don't even know if you need introductions to her, but she she's worth saying this. I was never more impressed with a with a person than when I met Marinette Miller Meek. She is such a strong lady, such a strong advocate. I can't wait to see what she do, does when she is our senator. So thank you. Well, having gone through this again and now my husband out door knocking for me, I just want to say, Kevin, thank you very much. <laughs> For giving um, Iowa uh, your wife, our governor, it's a huge sacrifice that you make for us, and I thank you for that, and we all thank you. <laughs> this may be politically incorrect, and I don't mean to get this person in trouble. Mayor Lazio is here. Thank you, Mayor Lazio. <laughs> He is always working hard to help Ottumwa and Wapalo County move forward, grow, increase wages, make it a better place to live for everyone who lives here. And he is overworked and underappreciated, so thank you for being here. <laughs> Cowboy philosopher Will Rogers said, I don't make jokes about the government. I just read the news and report the facts. <laughs> <laughs> But he wasn't looking at Iowa. Because if he was looking at Iowa, he would say the facts are outstanding. I think that used to be our motto, outstanding in the fields. But you've just heard that we are the number one state in the country. Not our acclamation, US News and World Report. And you hear this guy on TV tall kind of guy, kind of skinny, looks a little, as my uh, person standing in our house said, they look kind of slimy. <laughs> I'm just reporting what somebody said. You hear him say, well, we need to take our state in a different direction. What other direction is there, people? <laughs> if you are number one, there's only one direction you can go, and that's down. So we want to help Governor Riddles get elected as the first woman elected to the state of Iowa. We want to help Mary Mosman get elected, Paul Pate get elected, Chris Peters get elected. I didn't like hearing about the doctor at the University of Iowa. That makes me feel bad for my profession that they embezzled money. Save that one for some other place here. <laughs> and you hear a lot of stuff on the TV. And it's hard to filter through the facts. It's hard to know what to believe and what not to believe. But this you can believe. We want better health care for you that has more choice, lower cost, and better quality. We want an area that has more jobs and better paying jobs, and we're going to work to get it there for you. We want a government that serves you not the other way around, that serves you. And this is the team that can do that. So we're asking you for your help, we're asking for your vote, we're asking for you to take a neighbor, get out there, get energized, don't believe the attack ads because you know what? I may not stand tall, but at the end of the day, I'm standing. <laughs> introduce 
you to a young lady that's first time candidate into political office, don't know why she wants to put herself into the fray, but we sure are glad that she's here with us today. Holly Breen. Make extra phone calls, send messages, every vote is going to count. We have to make sure that we move in the right direction. I chose to stay here in Southern Iowa because I love it. This is the best place. Not only Iowa is the best place, I think Southern Iowa is the best place. That's why I raised my children. I want to make sure that the next generation can stay here because we are amazing and they need that choice to stay here. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to fight for you. So we got to make sure that we get them elected at the governor. We also need to make sure we keep control in the Republican Senate and a Republican House so we can continue to move in the right direction. So I ask for your vote. I ask for your vote for every single individual up here so we can keep moving and make this even better. Yay! And in order to do that, we're going to also take the next District 81 and we're going to turn it red. And here's Sherry. Yay! Thank you, Molly. You know, I just wanted to say a couple words before I start about another candidate, one of our great candidates that couldn't be here today, but his wife is here representing Reuben Neff, and he is running for county attorney. She's right there. Kenneth Sheila, she's beautiful. And the reason Reuben's not here is because, like so many of these great people, he's volunteering. He's doing mock trials with the kids in the community. So, Barring that, he would have been here for sure. We love Ruben. Please get out and vote for Ruben F. And spread the word about this guy because he's going to make big changes right here locally. And you know, I just wanted to talk a little bit about gratitude and positive energy. I am so grateful for all the people I see here in this audience and all the people I meet door to door in this community. These are amazing, engaged citizens. And you know, I think that the positive energy that this group behind me presents is what is going to win us all this election. I think it's the positive energy that we project because Iowa is number one in so many ways and mainly because of all of you folks and the folks behind me up here. And I know we're going to keep Iowa moving forward and I'm just so happy to be a part of it. Of course, I'm asking for your vote and let's get the Wapolo County and the Tomwa Eldon Agency, let's get on the right track. Let's vote a Republican into office and let's keep this, keep this high energy going. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to wrap it up with uh, somebody else that's been integral to the Republican um, victories that we've seen over the last several years. Uh, we are Republican strong and working hard every day to keep the majorities up and down the ticket. But somebody that's been really helping us lead that charge, done a phenomenal effort, is our great chairman, Chairman uh, Kaufman. Jeff? I'm not going to talk very long. I'm going to keep pretty mellow. Here's what I want to, here's what I want to say to you. And this is, uh, th th this is from the heart. I've been a public school teacher for 30 years. I got a whole closet full of all the awards and everything. Doesn't mean a whole lot, to be honest with you. It's look on those students' faces. And I'm telling you, from the perspective of a person that has dedicated my life to our kids and to our schools, there is no one, there is no one better suited to lead this state and to lead the education in this state at the university, community college, and K-12 level than Kim Reynolds. She is our education governor. I've been there and I can report that. I can also tell you, someone that has worked with the kids that have been severely disabled through the years, I want to tell you that what Kim Reynolds did and what she is doing to improve our Medicaid system is absolutely the right place to go. It took courage. It took heart. It took risk for her to do what she was doing and remove us from an unsustainable path and put us on a sustainable path and pledge to continue working until we get it right, until we absolutely are helping every single Iowan that requires our help. And let me tell you something, that's not something Brett Hubble could do. That's not something Brett Hubble will do. That is something that Kim Reynolds has done and will continue to improve. I'm putting my trust in Kim Reynolds for that. 
we couldn't ask for a more stark contrast than the tax issue. The bottom line is this. Fred Hubble just came from a, from a big rally appearing with Joe Biden who actually made fun of and used horrible language for the federal uh, tax cuts. I think he believed he called them, and I quote, obscene. That's who Fred Hubble decided to bring into Iowa. Fred Hubble has said, and make no bones about it, every single tax cut is on the table, and that includes the tax cut, by the way, 93% of middle class Iowans will get. They are on the chopping block if Fred Hubble is the next governor. That is a fact. That's not me talking, that's not Republican spin talking, that is Fred Hubble talking. At least what we know about him, of course his tax returns are still a mystery, and I hope they remain a mystery too, because quite frankly, I'm tired of talking about this guy, because he doesn't have a clue. <laughs> so the bottom line is this. The bottom line is this. We are in the driver's seat right now. We're in the driver's seat for every single one of these individuals. Look at this, folks. You know how easy of a job I got when I have these individuals behind me? It's absolutely terrific. I'm standing in a county that has one of the strongest GOP operations in the entire state. Honestly. You know it's really important. You know it's really important and we need you. Because if Republicans show up, we are going to win on Tuesday. We get more of Kim Reynolds on Tuesday. We get, how about that Miller Meeks lady? She's got a little fire, doesn't she? So all I ask is this, please, please do just a little bit more. You showed up on a beautiful day and we appreciate it. Most of you have, have voted absentee. I want to ask you this. It's a very specific request. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot because voting absentee and showing up this afternoon isn't going to get it done. It's absolutely not going to get it done. Not when you're running against somebody, as Senator Grassley said, with a silver spoon and an unlimited bank account. And i got to ask you to please think of people, and I don't mean your neighbor that's got every single, every single Republican sign in their yard. They're going to be there. I'm talking about those individuals that you're pretty sure are going to vote Republican, but you know in your heart of hearts they're probably not going to show up on Tuesday. If I can just get you to call or to reach out, they can be relatives, I don't care who they are, folks, three to five individuals that you know in your heart of hearts are not going to show up. If you do that, if you do that, Wapalo County, you're going to continue to lead the state, which you are right now in terms of taking what was a blue state and making that, or it's blue county, and making that county red. That's what I would like to ask you to do. And I'd like you to send these folks out to Wapalo County with a stand of support and unity for our ticket and for Kim Reynolds. Let's go get them. Let's go get them, Wapalo. Thank you. This is so exciting. Did you learn something new today? If you did